Good morning, welcome to this update on Monday the 11th of July from Phoenix Blue. I'm Tom Colley and I'll take you through the news and the markets this morning. Let's start over on the news and uh, big news on Friday was non-farm payroll. We had some really strong uh, numbers in, 287,000 uh, jobs created against a forecast of 175,000, a really strong headline rate. However, that was greatly offset by some other information around it. Probably the most significant was the previous month we had some really, really poor figures uh, on the uh, non-farm employment change at 38,000 uh, job increases. Those figures were revised down to 11,000, so even more negative um, than had pre uh, previously been perceived. Add into that an unemployment rate up at 4.9% from a forecast of 4.8% and a previous of 47 and also a reduction uh, in the increase or the slowing in the increase of the hourly earnings month on month to 0.1% from 0.2% expected and 0.2% the previous month. What this meant was we got a big spike based on these very, very strong headline numbers here only for that spike to die away extremely quickly and by the close on Friday we had very much um, a status quo we were where we started in respect of most markets following that event. Now having said that I don't think that's totally played out I certainly will be um, sat on the fence certainly this morning maybe the whole of today looking to see exactly how that plays out um, particularly looking for dollar strength to play out in order to um, take advantage of some of the uh, setups in the FX markets. But we'll go over to those shortly. Um, there's no actual news announcements of any significance at all um, today, Monday. However, later this week, once to watch, we have the Bank of Canada on Wednesday with their rate announcement, and then we have the Bank of England on Thursday with re their rate announcement. Both those um have the potential for reductions um, we'll obviously talk about those on the day of the events themselves over in the far east well not a lot to say really about the shanghai composite we've seen uh, a bit of a sell-off there slightly surprised at that because i read over the weekend that the government had authorized uh, public pension funds to start buying equities and they'd previously been banned from doing so uh, that amounts to i think i read 300 billion um, funds that could in principle or a third of them could be utilized uh, in the equities markets. The reason for this is they haven't been returning um, sufficiently high returns uh, on the investments they've been making in government bonds etc. So they're looking for better returns in what is a, an aging population. Over on the US dollar Chinese one exchange rate Bearing in mind, we look, we've seen this devaluation through here. We've, we're closed um, for a number of days above the previous high closes here. Um, I think I showed you on Friday. I'm looking for a further, further devaluation of that on the basis that we've seen devaluation here and here, which led to um, falls in stock markets around the world. Over to the Nikkei here, well some big news over the weekend in Japan, um, the government of Abe, the current Prime Minister, um, won an election in the upper house without going into the technicalities of their political system that basically allows him um, more certainty and control over what he can do. He's already stated uh, that he will be uh, taking bold economic action on the economy. Uh, talk earlier in the week or before the election by one of his advisors was that there may be as much as 200 billion addition 200 billion dollars that is US dollars additional um, funds before the end of this year to be utilized in some form of stimulus um, attempt so we'll be keeping our eye on that um, that's seen a uh, a jump in the or a bullish move on the Nikkei there and also on the US dollar yen exchange rate bearing in mind that's a weaker 
a weakening yen, which is exactly what um, Japan wants in its fight to get some sort of inflation into its um, failing economy. So the result of the election being perceived positively there. Over on the dollar index, well, this is what I was talking about here. This doji bar here is what happened through through non-farm payroll through to the end of that session. Um, a more up-to-date look at this, I'm looking at a live screen elsewhere, and we are getting a bit of a bullish move so far into this market. Um, but as you can see, I've got a channel marked in here. Key level would be a break of $97 at this level or a reversal, and then we'll be looking for a level to hold before um, returning to dollar strength, be that this around 95.30 I've got marked in there, or even the bottom of the channel. Over uh, other interesting pairs to have a look at, New Zealand US dollar, clearly at a potential top here, it's at a significant level, it's creating a um, double top type formation, We'll be looking for opportunities to get in this market, potentially relatively cautiously at the moment. We're looking for a breakout of this channel below this level here at 72.30 to retest and take that market short, um, should that continue to play out. Um, there is potential long side in this market at the moment. New Zealand is uh, the strongest of the currencies at this moment in time um, on our matrix of currency strengths that we do every weekend. Also of interest this morning, great interest is the S&P 500 on the overnight session has made a new high. That's an all-time high. And um, when this slide was taken, um, the the price was actually back down at that previous uh, the previous all-time high. But clearly something significant there. But what really um, is conflicting about this information is that would normally be a really strong um, risk on signal and we'd be expecting uh, safe havens such as gold and here is gold to be falling back we haven't yet seen that now I've got a trend line this is a weekly chart I've got a trend line drawn in uh, there which is three touches one two three um, now different data might produce slightly different trend lines. I've had a look on four sets of data and they're almost all exactly giving the same level. So um, we are looking for a pullback on gold with equities having um, been bullish through last week or more. We would have expected gold and silver and other safe havens to sell off we haven't yet seen that will we now see this move on equities to new all-time highs and finally see the sell-off which our commitment of traders uh, signal tells us that is uh, a high probability or will we see break to a break to new highs if we don't see that pullback and equities continue to rally we really have got a disconnect in the market and um, we need to be extremely cautious because basically the normal rules or the normal um, template that we work to isn't playing out. So it's a time not to be taking risk with your risks with your funds. Uh, over on crude oil, that's a trade that I know I spoke about last week. We were looking at a level around 46 uh, US dollars here. We got a break below um, on Friday. Oh, sorry, on Thursday, um, but going into Friday, I was hoping we might get a pullback and a move away to get a stop to break even. We didn't get that before the non-farm announcement, so we cancelled orders um, and have put them in again overnight um, to look for a retest of that level. Just an update on commodities. Uh, this is a corn trade. Um, our entry was around this level here on the break of these, sorry, our entry was on the low of this pin bar here, so about that level. We added in uh, about this level, we took profits here, we took profits again here, um, and then our, the remainder of our trade 
um, for me personally, stopped out at this level here on Friday. So I'm out of this trade, but I am looking for further downside. We do see further downside in this market down to about uh, 320. Um, but I'll be looking for a price action entry at one of these levels to take it down. That move was in the region of a thousand pips. Um, so a fantastic move. We banked a lot of money on that last week. So um, although we are very, very cautious on FX markets, taking very few trades, taking them at lower risks, our ability to trade other markets means that we can still um, make good consistent profits. Whereas if you're forced into the FX market because you don't have the ability to look in other areas, um, you will be trading at lower probability, higher risk, um, etc., etc. Now, a lot of how we, uh, what dictates how and when we trade corn is in terms of seasonality and commitment of traders analysis, which is something we specialize in. Um, if you are interested in finding a bit more about this, we're offering a, a free day's trading, or it's a free afternoon, on the uh, 19th of July. Uh, four hours free trading with one of our senior traders, question and answer session, and then there'll also be um, uh, existing Phoenix Blue clients around who you can have a chat with and, and ask exactly how their trading's improved um, having adopted the methods and systems that we use. If you'd like to know more about this, in, uh, email us at info at phoenixblue.co.uk and we will send you yeah, an invitation with all the details for July the 19th in London. Um, it's an afternoon session. Okay, guys, um, that's it for today. Um, we have another day of, an, or we've had a, we're in a, Another very uncertain period following non-farm payroll. Please trade it extremely carefully. Look for the results of non-farm to play out. Potentially look for dollar strength to play out um, before entering the markets. And um, if you're not trading commodities, seriously consider about talking to us about doing that so that you've got another string to your bow. Okay, thanks for listening and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye now.